You'll be cancelling any open order you choose like a boss by the end of this episode. There's a few things you need in order to complete this episode. Firstly, you need a connection to Binance because that's where we're going to be getting all of our data from. Secondly, you need to have made sure that you have authenticated your API correctly to Binance. And this means things like having an API key, your secret key, having sorted out your HMAC signature, uh, and so on. If you're not really sure about how to do that, in a previous episode, I outlined how to go through that whole process, and I've linked that in the description. Go ahead and make sure that you've got those two things, and then let's continue. Let's talk about cancelling orders. Now, why this is important is because as we go through our strategy, we need a way to cancel orders that haven't been filled. Maybe we flashed a signal that it was time to buy and the price just never breached our stock price, or you know, maybe we don't want to risk any more of our balance. All of those things mean that we need to cancel um, currently open orders. In the previous episode, I showed you how to go ahead and retrieve those orders. So now I'm going to show you how to go ahead and cancel any order that you choose on Binance. It's actually pretty straightforward, which is nice. So we're going to call the function cancel underscore order. Super ingenious, I know. And it's got two parameters, project settings, uh, sorry, three parameters, project settings, symbol, and order ID. You can see there I'm filling out the comments for the function. I do that for every single episode. And I'd give a quick shout out to show yourself, future self, a little bit of love by putting in your comments. I can promise you that in six months time, when you come back to your code, you're going to be thanking your past self for putting in those comments. I've also put in these comments a link to the documentation, and you can get all of this code on my GitHub. While I complete the comments, I wanted to give a quick shout out to everyone to please, please, please follow me if you haven't already. I love what I do, and I really desire to keep doing it. And when you follow me, it helps me keep getting there. Currently, I'm on a mission to get to monetization. That's my next goal. So I'd really like it if you followed me and shared it with your friends and family. Here's a pseudocode for what we're doing. And I'm putting this in because a lot of people have let me know that they like to use the code, but obviously modify it for themselves. So the pseudocode kind of tells you what I'm doing. And when you're modifying it for yourself, if that's what you want to do, it'll help you kind of get there. So what we want to do is we want to get the API keys set up the client, cancel the order, and then return the outcome to the user. Now, I'm going to keep this pretty basic. And when I return, it's just going to be a true or a false about you know whether or not it's, it's finished or not. Um, obviously, you can go into far more complex reactions based upon what you get back. For instance, maybe the cancel doesn't work or something like that. Um, I think that's a little bit beyond the scope of what we're going to do in this little series. So um, I've just kept it simple. To get the API keys, if you followed my previous episodes, you'll know exactly what this is about. We're just going to use a neat little config.ini that, um, that Binance uses, their little um, config um, parser class, um, which just sets it all up for us. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and you know get our API key and secret key with HMAC. Now, if you don't want to go that way, that's fine. But building your own HMAC is a non-trivial thing. There's many hours of troubleshooting that you'll be going through to get there. We set up the client using the client class from the Binance, the official Binance library. And then we're just going to go ahead and cancel the order. Now, I've locked this in a try um, and accept statement. The reason is because if it doesn't work, I feel like shutting down the whole program by throwing an error just isn't really that effective. Like, um, you know, you might want to try several times or there's a whole bunch of things. So I've just put it in the try and accept statements to make it a little bit more robust. Passing in those parameters, so the cancel order parameters, you need to have the symbol and the order ID. You can't just pass in the order ID. We'll print the response to the screen. And the outcome of that, even if it doesn't actually cancel the order, we'll consider that the function has successfully completed, i.e. it's a separate issue as to why the order wouldn't cancel. Maybe the market's moved in the wrong direction or something. If we do get an exception, we'll print that to the screen, and then we'll say that the function hasn't completed successfully by returning false. Again, a little bit of semantics, but it is an important distinction if you're planning on using this in your own code.
And then ultimately, we want to return that outcome back to the user. 